Hello and welcome to the PM Show, your weekly roundup of what's new and going on in the modelling world. How are we doing today, gentlemen? We all okay? Aye, uh, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, fine, thanks. Fighting through the fuel shortages, are you? I got some yesterday. Did you? I managed to get some last night, yes. That was all right. <laughs> was that it? Were you filling up all your cans and uh, bottles? And... Yeah, yeah, not quite, no. Just, just a fuel tank will do, but yes, I did have some. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the one and only petrol station I passed on the way here was um, rabbit and full and everyone was queuing as normal, so. Mm. I was going to say, for all the people who've had electric cars, they're laughing now, isn't it? Yeah. You know, charging it at home. Oh, it's, yeah, terrible. So it is, yeah. it's that thing, isn't it? Where everyone's like, oh, you wouldn't have electric because it's like a pain, isn't it? And charging till you get to this. And everyone's like, do you know what? It's the future. I know we've discussed it. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm really considering it now. Yeah, that's it, <laughs> definitely. So, yeah. Anyway, we trust you're all doing very well at home as well. Um, as I say, it's been one of those sort of funny weeks this week. Uh, not a lot's really happening, but obviously we're sort of getting ready for the weekend sales and various bits and pieces like that. Uh, from my side of it, luckily the sanders have, have come in and already I've had two emails overnight saying when PM models will have stocks of, uh, and they will have them, I will get them out today. Uh, so they will get them obviously uh, tomorrow or Friday. I'll put them on the next day courier up to you. So you'll be fully stocked up with sanders and all the bits and pieces uh, with that one. One of those emails was from me and one was from Matt. It probably, <laughs> yes, no. Well, we've had uh, have one from Sweden as well, because obviously you guys uh, ship in uh, via the discount code and various things for the members. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing for that as well. So yes, so don't panic everybody. They are coming through. I've also spoke to the Greek lot as well. So uh, they're getting a restock as well. And obviously Brett and everyone. So things are returning all back to normal with stocks getting around as well. So that's good. Well, good job. Very good. And um, so do we want to start with the sort of small elephant in the room of the uh, Lancaster border models, brand new tooled <laughs> uh, Lancaster, uh, which um, actually let me just go off and find the little uh, thing of it. Uh, hold on. Well, I might as well just go to the latest post because it's all over our forum. Uh, da, 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 where are we? It should be here within usually the top uh, three posts because it has been all day yesterday. There we go. Again, a couple of things to it. The box art does look really, really nice. I tell you what, yeah, it is. It's a good box art. Yeah, that. and it is. It is the uh, box art apparently that Mengel going to have in there. Uh, sorry, hmm. Wings are going to have into it. Yes, they have bought yeah. the uh, box art from them. Bought so. the rights to it. Yeah. So, you know, obviously we've been speaking about this since the demise of Wing That Wings uh, and everything else. And finally, Border Models have come up with their uh, buying rights to it, shall we say. Um, one little thing I will say, I know uh, their statements that Border Models made about retooling and sorting out the problems with it. Again, I would take that somewhat with a pinch of salt, purely because I think some of it's lost a little bit in translation. Uh, speaking to a colleague of mine uh, who's over in that part of the world and all the rest of it, they read it slightly differently to how we read it over here. So I think in some ways it's just a little bit has been lost in translation. I know for a fact, and the guys do as well, when we spoke to Wing Nut Wings when they were at Telford a few years ago and had it there on display, they told us that it was having to have retooling was going to be done to the mould and it was going to be delayed because there was a few issues to it. So again, the thing where it when you sort of heard what border models said it is almost like they got half a kit you know yeah. from the tooling i don't think it actually it's one of those things that slightly lost a little bit in translation it, they needed to fix the problems which wing that wings knew when they were going needed to be fixed and i think they picked up the molds during that process so that's what it was they needed to work out where it was wrong what needed to be fixed and how they were going to go about fixing it with the actual tooling which we believe now has been sorted out and has been done and uh, we should be seeing this kit around about christmas so, mm. the, so they've said i, I so, imagine if the tools have been sat around for a while as well they probably needed a good clean up and hmm. settle before they get used anyway so yeah um there, there's a little bit of confusion i know with people i've spoken to about exactly where that tooling was as well 
mm. um, because it was being sorted out and done and various things to it and then obviously had to be shipped around and various stuff so yeah there was a little bit into there but I know a lot of people have said to me about it sounds like it was this that and the other and again I would take it somewhat Google Translate was I think used between the statement that was made uh, from the English version uh, to the sort of with the uh, the Chinese version shall we say of it so uh, again I don't think it's going to be that bad um, and obviously the big thing is the price um, you know I've seen prices on the internet that vary anything from 380 quid to a thousand pound so uh, take your picks from where that one's going to come out and again some of these obviously went straight up on pre-order with certain companies uh, and then obviously other ones have sort of held them back I know obviously from our point of view we can get border models in we do sell border models uh, if we're going to be getting it and all the rest of it may be a different matter because again it's been pushed as a, a limited run so again yeah, when uh, you're talking limited run how thanks. limited are we talking are we exactly. talking adults yeah what what sort of numbers are we looking at for a limited mm. run here because again i think you know <clears throat> going off going off the old hk one mm -hmm. i think it's one of them people like the idea yes actually people parting with the pennies might be a different yeah absolutely different kettle of fish i'm glad they didn't scrap the molds because when we did see it at telford a few years ago it, it, mm. it is stunning really isn't it? it's yes. nice yeah uh yeah. and it would have been a shame for it just to be lost in to you mm. know um be smelted down for something else so it's nice that borders taking it on yeah um but yeah, yeah the availability over here again we don't know until we get some info from the importer and prices mm. then we we're not going to put anything up about pre-orders or or anything because obviously we need some proper information we don't want to be just jumping on the bandwagon and then it not materialize which i think is what's happened with certain said uh, other manufacturers out there um sorry manufacturer distributors uh, because again it's amazing how it went from being <coughs> i know one particular source had it up for 349 dollars yeah. And then that changed in about an hour later to 600 odd. So it was like, yeah, you know, even they didn't know. So yeah. it's when you think that that section you were just showing then mm. is that big. Yeah. Yeah, it's big beast, isn't it? You had mm. the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, and I must admit, I've had John uh, Tigger's uh, Lancaster here. He brought it over to show me uh, when he completed it. And obviously, I know we all saw it at Telford as well. And, you know, that's obviously the 32nd HK Models one. And it is massive. It, it's, yeah, yeah ridiculously it, it's, big. Yeah. It's a huge, huge lump. So you get a lot of plastic. So again, it's this thing where I know I have read up there, you know, and again, you, it's forum talk, shall we say. But people have said about, obviously, with the cost of it and everything else, just the amount of plastic that's on board uh, and the size of the actual tooling that is required to produce a kit like that, it's not cheap, you know? I know people are saying, oh, it's it's overpriced, and which is amazing when no one knows it yet. Uh, but again, I think <laughs> when you just see how much plastic is in that, nose section alone is probably the same amount that's in that, you know, <laughs> just for the nose. Uh, it, it's, you know, there is a lot of, lot of materials involved with it. The tooling costs, as we know, speaking to Wing Nut Wings about this one, they were saying that the tooling for a lot of the Wing Nut Wings costs, the major thing is, is because it's so big and there's only a few injection molding companies that can actually produce them in that size, yeah. you know, clean, cleanly, as we say, uh, and all the rest of it. Yes, companies can produce huge things injection molded, but not to the fine detail that you need on something like that. So again, that is something with cost gets pushed up and everything. So I, I wouldn't be, you know, as you say, this thing about limited editions and there's only going to be so many. And then I know, obviously, again, you take a lot of it, it was lost in translation. But again, the thing they were saying about for the moment, it will be limited edition run and there'll only be X amount. The way I sort of interpret it is they're obviously trying to create a buzz. They're trying to get, you know, as much sort of, you know, stuff out there about this kit as possible in the hope that they're going to get back this cost. So I assume they're going to do a limited run to try and get back the cost of buying the tool in, cleaning up the tool in, changing it and all the rest of it, and then obviously manufacturing, let alone instructions. They've had to pay, as we know, for that gorgeous box art as well. Yeah. You know, uh, as, and they've made that quite clear as well that they've bought the original box art uh, uh, artwork for it. So again, I'm thinking that you know, from a business point of view, and it does make sense if they can do a limited run that covers all of that cost, and they can get a bit of gravy out of it at the end of the day as well. Uh, that then, obviously, hopefully, then they'll be able to judge how much has been 
sold and how quickly yeah. and then maybe do a second run you know uh and again second run do we think that may be the downbuster mm, yeah possibly oh, don't know yeah it could be because if they bought the tooling i assume they bought the other bits to do the downbuster version as well from a uh, business point of view it's something that does make sense mm. i've not read all the gunk and everything i was busy yesterday but has anything been mentioned about the nose section uh as far as i know nothing's been mentioned outwardly about the no sections being a standalone kit will be available and coming down the line from what i've been told as well but from what i have heard and again this is just internet talk shall we say uh that when they were offered the molds um and they decided to buy them they bought it came as a package right so i'm assuming that this package included the no sections tooling because obviously as we know we saw the ones at Telford and the no sections on their own and the various bits of pieces I'm assuming it has come with it uh so yeah interesting very very interesting yeah um, well we're gonna we're gonna definitely know by the end of the year beginning of the next so absolutely yeah information will be out there so yeah um I don't know really what else to say you know, it's uh I think it's, it's a kit, isn't it? I think it's going to be literally Marmite. And we've spoken about this before because, you know, like we said last week's show as well when we were talking about it, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's a massive kit. So that's going to put a lot of people off because it's just far too big. Mm -hmm. You know, then you've got huge kits cost huge amounts of money. So that's going to put a lot of models off. So with each step, you're shrinking your sales potential, you know, uh, right the way down. And again, that's what's nice, to be honest, about that with the no sections. You know, if I yeah. was a, a savvy businessman and I had a lot of cash just floating around, I probably would have tried to buy just the no sections. Because again, you know, you could then get a nice little market build up with the no section psychics. I think they're a really good idea. But building the entire thing of how big these things are and where you put them, you know, is another matter. It's, so it's manageable on the no section, isn't it? And mm. that's with the business end of the aircraft as well in a funny sense so i know there's a lot to do with the bombay but again it you're not going to display it upside down are you unless you're hanging no. it from your ceilings no so really you know when wingnut wings originally was going to do the nose arc section which we all said mm -hmm. was probably the one we'd go for anyway if we yeah. Yeah. do it which obviously hk clicked onto it yeah and, and obviously when the demise of wingnut wings thought well we, we're doing ours and we'll just kind of borrow that idea shall we say yes <laughs> um it makes perfect sense because like I say you can build it you can display it it will go in a cabinet yeah and they look so good think, we'll say yeah, we, we, go. we had ideas of crew in it and putting lights in it and all sorts absolutely yeah we can speak about it, it as well yeah making it a, a proper mm. So this, this photo here, kudos to Nathan, because I don't know what I've done with mine, because I was looking for my photos for this yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Nathan took this one from Telford when we were all there doing it. This is how the nose section was originally going to be done, which I said was why, again, well, I'm not being funny, obviously they don't want to be look like they're deliberately copying, but why HK decided to literally have a, a, a dolly underneath it when, as I say, that was the nicer option to have the Bombay doors closed and then on the little plinth behind it, so it stood up and had it hanging forward. I think that was a far nicer way of displaying it. Uh, yeah. But it would be interesting to know if border models have got that and if they're going to do that as a standalone yeah. as well. You know, because again, that's where I got really excited because let's face it, all the detail that you can see is in the no section. Uh, you know, so from a point of view of obviously the crew, uh, you know, the Bombay, uh, you know, not what we said before, you don't really see it. So you're looking down into all the cockpit areas, the nose turret, yeah, the, yeah, the bomb aimers blister, things like that. You know, they're the areas you can really see all of that detail into it. And one of the nicest things, to be honest, I love about that particular kit, the wing nuts wings one, is the stress skin. Yeah. yeah, it's got yeah. a beautiful look to it. When you even in the plastic, we just saw it as you can see there in grey, and uh, it just looked great with that sort of just that slight distortion in all those little panels and the riveting. And again, you don't get that one with the HK one, and that was yeah. always the the difference. You know, if you put them next to each other, it's almost like night and day. You know, um, well, again, so, to me, yeah, actually, to be honest with you though, you've got a good comparison there with that Spitfire that's in front of you mm. and a Tamiya Spitfire. Yeah. You know, you look at the six foot away, done, mm -hmm. yeah. you've got the nose is who. You oh, get up close and then obviously you can see the detail. It's that. But again, it's it's price point. Because hmm. we obviously, you know, I can't see how they can pull in 
uh, border models can pull in the Lancaster at the mm. same price point as the 8K one. No, no. You know, so again, you've got to weigh up your options of what you want. You know, if they mm. bring out their nose section, I wonder what that's going to, you know, sort of... Well, I suppose that depends on up. the... Because border models have probably got rid of a lot of the development costs, haven't they, of doing the research on the aircraft, the doing the moulds, whereas HK have had to... Start from scratch. Start from yeah, scratch. I suppose. So they've got a lot more money into it than probably border models have. I mean, I'm sure it's cost them a pretty penny to get the moulds. Hmm. Um, mm. But in fact, I, I, was, I, was, I was surprised that a certain other New Zealand company, maybe it was out of their price range, but, you know, didn't... Perhaps they've they seen the light and thought, you know... Well, this, are we talking as, about the new company who yes. hasn't released the kit yet? But again, I, like, I think that falls perfectly into what we were discussing last week about, you know, why would you take on technically a bit of a turkey here which is a bit big it's a heavy kit heavy cost and everything else when you yeah. can flog a lot of chickens yeah you know uh and that's the thing i think you know that you know they know the business probably better than anyone don't they because they all work for the company and not being funny some of the best you know i've worked for companies that have been failing in the past uh and it's always the people on the shop floor know and they can tell you exactly where it's failing as well you know it's usually the upper management don't see it the wood yeah. for the trees sometimes and they go into this completely blinkered yeah i've worked for companies i could tell you exactly why it failed you know and i'm just a you know a bod on the floor uh so again they may be into that situation and maybe they were offered it and turned around and said you know what we've got plans of our own yeah. to do the more bread and butter stuff that we can yeah, make yeah. money well, on i think if you're starting a business like say you've got to have a cash cow and you've got to yeah, have absolutely affordable to produce yeah. um and, and all sell you know, yeah. we've all got these bright ideas. Everybody who models is like, well, I'd like to see one of these and one of these and one of these. But when it comes down to business sense or yes. you know, actually selling units, yeah. it'd be very limited. Mm. You yeah. said it before, well, that's the reason why they all do Spitfires, 109s, Tigers, yeah. Mustangs, yeah. Shermans, whatever, yeah. yeah. Because we've said it many a time, isn't it? Everyone, <laughs> and we are the first ones to say it on the show as well. Oh, just what the world needs, another Spitfire. You know, another Sherman, but it, it, it's what, what sells at the end of the day. You yeah. know, if you've got something a bit off, you know, that's not normal, i.e. is a big expense or a giant scale. And, you know, you do have to think of these things. You know, at the end of the day, companies are there to make money. I, you know, I know many a businessman that I've worked with over the years got far too much money, but they don't chuck it away for nothing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you've got to invest you know, in, you know, if you if you want to keep your business going you've got to invest your money right you just can't yeah, absolutely you know, just chuck it around can you so yeah let's see what happens with it really isn't it? let's just mm. see i think we'll be the know. next big thing from you know say we can get border models we do have a source for them yeah. and all the rest of it so and again it'll be interesting for us to get a price yeah um and you know that's a, a real price uh, and we can stick to uh and then i think that's when you probably a lot of people will make up their minds of what they're going to do with it yeah. uh, again limited edition we all know what happens with limited editions everyone sort of assumes that there isn't that many of them but for all we know there could be thousands of them because again certain company which we won't will mention which is edard all of their kits are limited editions but some of them hang around for a very very long time some of them seem to be quite limited and then come back again and again and again uh so it, again it, it could be that border models are just literally trying to create that little bit of buzz which you know kudos to them uh it's worked because everyone's talking about it um and then obviously see how many pre-orders they can get actual sales in the bank and then you know as you say go from there isn't it you know with the limited edition bit that they've done or is that what they're, they're going to be limited i'm just wondering if it's actually the cost of them having them Produced. made as well yeah absolutely because it's such a big thing and there's a lot of screws mm. to it yes it's a big outlay for them as a company because i don't think they're a massive company are they? they haven't been going that long no to obviously pay for an injection molding company which i presume i presume they don't do it themselves in-house i presume it is shipped you know out shipped somewhere yeah. else for a, um, a company to do it for them it's the cost of that mm. so they can only have a thousand units done or however many they're going to have done first and, time and also i think that's the thing and we've spoken about it before from a business point of view like with us even uh, yeah. of how pm models works is that we yeah. put up pre-orders so we can judge how many we need yeah. to get in yeah. and then obviously we have to buy the kits up front yeah. and then obviously we get them and do and it's the same for them obviously if they get pre-orders and they know they're going to shift say you know three thousand of them yeah. you know then they'll get three thousand made yeah 
you know and as yeah. I say you go from it like that so you know at the end of the day yeah I don't think it's anything wrong with doing it if, if you have got all the versions it makes more sense that they do a run of the first one a run of the so then the dam busters one yeah and then a run of the cockpit yeah but as we know it doesn't work like that does it because they all come off the same one yeah i know but the, but the boxing wise and everything else it's all like it keeps the momentum of the sales going doesn't it rather than producing mm -hmm. one lot of the whole thing yeah Do you know what i mean yeah, so I like yeah there's ten thousand of one and then yeah we are waiting six months to be you know to bring the next one out it's just it's easier mm. makes more sense that they do a limited run of the first one mm -hmm. a limited run of the second one a limited run of the third one and then they can start producing kits to flow out to the general mm. public yeah in another year's year or two's time yeah you know yeah i know right? and, and stocking it all in went once once the money started coming mm. in, they'd make more money selling three different versions mm in a time period then they would just start trying to sell one version in a bigger time period if you know what I mean yeah how yeah. popular is the Lancaster out, out of the UK that's what I'd like to know mm. you know, do you know how popular is it in the rest of the world it's popular in Canada isn't it I don't think it was as popular in Germany no <laughs> depends where you live but yeah um, <laughs> but again but do you know what I mean we always talk from our little island that we live on yeah, yeah. But this is obviously for them as a company. It's it's a bigger picture. Yeah, I think you know, as I say, from I know it's that a very iconic aeroplane. Yeah, we've obviously. we've often said about it. I think luckily though, the Lancaster carries enough weight of being one of the top aircraft of World War Two. Obviously, being the heavy bomber of World War Two and things like that, it will probably carry. It's obviously got a lot of interest in the US, which is a huge market. Uh, Japan, as we know, British stuff does do very well in Japan as well. So from that point of view, it uh, is done very well, nicely. It's in Japan, though. It's well out their scale because they do stuff this big. Absolutely, yeah. They the, would the need a, a like, garage for that. Yeah, that, that they might do, but they're, yes, you know, they're not. I don't. Thirty mm. seconds just not their scale, no, is no, it? Not at all. No, that's it. Which you can you, you can tell from even Tammy and Azagawa is very limited mm. sort of releases in thirty seconds that they've done over the years, isn't it? Yes, and yeah. they've all been. I mean, even Tammy has moved away from the jets now because obviously the the F four that you did mm -hmm. is is big in thirty seconds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then obviously they've moved now to like the Corsair and the Spitfire yeah. and you know yeah. uh, mm -hmm. P fifty one, which are manageable, aren't they? Let's yeah, go. of course they do. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. You're still it's not massively, but you say if you're into a Phantom, you're looking like this, yeah. like this. It's yeah, a totally yeah, different ball game. Needs, not small. Yeah. Um, no. And I mean, as a gal's point of view, they've stuck with like the 109s or 190s. I think the Stuka's probably their biggest one, isn't it? I'm not talking their older. Yeah, things. yeah, I know the newer ones, but yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, this, the Stuka's reasonable yeah. size, but you know, that this is a massive. Yeah. Something like that's a massive jump, isn't it? I it is. Anybody, I mean, Zuki Mori did 30 second stuff, don't they? Mm. I suppose they're about the only Japanese company that really. Mm. They've gone 48. Yeah, yeah, they've even got, it seems, after recent years, gone down to the 48 scale stuff. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? But yeah, hmm. it was just um, just an observation on my part. I was just wondering how popular it would be in the rest of the world. And hmm. over it. Again, do you think it's going to be more for the collector than the builder? Uh, again, I think that's that thing, isn't it? If you hang the limited edition label on it, it suddenly becomes more of a collector's item than a builder's item. But is that going to be limited edition to the box art? Well, and then yeah. are they going to change the box art, or is that going to be the standard box art? Mm. Because to me, where Eddard get it right is obviously they do their limited mm. editions, but they have the standalone box art that they put on their packaging. Yeah, and then obviously the normal kits that they produce are have got their own box art. Now, is that going to be yeah. the case with this Border Models one? Is that box art going to be yeah limited the, to the this one. kit? I mean, Border do add a bit of photo etching bits to their kits, don't they? So maybe you might get. I know that's a resin etching. figure, don't yeah, they? They've done with that 109. Yeah. yeah. You might get yeah. some photo etch or metal gun barrels and things with it. Or Again, it's a little bit of speculation because yeah. yeah. at the moment they could upgrade it as yeah. well. You know, there's nothing to say the border models haven't thought, right, okay, well, look, you know, we can add various parts internally that they thought are better ideas than what Wingnut Wings did. Well, no just, one said for a minute they're just taking the Wingnut Wings one yeah. and going to stamp that out. You might get, you might could get extras as the limited edition. Again, and, though, you're pushing mm -hmm. the cost up. Mm. Of, yeah, the, of the unit it, price. It's a limited edition first run. <sighs> I 
that's a risk though that to me as a business mm -hmm. i think that's a risk adding more cost to something that's not going to be cheap in the first place no you know it's all right adding it to a, a 60 pound 109 so it, go on it, then the question to the guys is then how much do you think is a reasonable amount to pay for it Ooh. so how much is the hk one full scale 350 isn't it? i think it's 350 isn't it yeah, yeah it's in that, that price band isn't it so what that, we think in the wing that wings one's going to be five and a half six i think if it's a, if it's a straight plastic kit mm. with no extras yeah probably about five and a half mm -hmm. yeah but yeah see i'm in the six range i must admit i think it's going to be around about six that's where i'm thinking it's going to be it's going to come in uk price will be around about 599 you see i was um I don't know who was I was talking to yesterday. Actually, I was, uh, yeah, I was talking to one of our suppliers yesterday about it, and um, and I was saying you've got to think as well with the importing, obviously, the cost of containers. The usual thing we've been working oh yeah, it is all the, the cost of year and off. Yeah, it's still obviously more, mm. you know, um, just import duties. All oh, that lot is going to push the price up for the for the import yeah. of this country. So they've got to get a good price to begin with. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it'd be interesting, it will be interesting, but I'm looking at, oh, I think, five and a half. So again, hours. we are presuming it's going to cost them more <coughs> HK to do theirs. And with everything that HK have had to do, like I said before, they've had to do all of the research and tooling, whereas all they've had to do is buy the tooling and whatever tweak else it. they've had to do, it, tweak, tweak it. it. Mm. It, it, it is a point though the, the, co the cost is... price might be less for them yeah mm. even though we're expecting it to be more expensive mm -hmm. yeah it, it might i don't know how it yeah. works in the world of doing stuff like that i don't know i don't know at all yeah they bought it a second hand it's i suppose it is all in and it is isn't it second hand mm. bit all in yeah, yeah. they might have yeah. made a certain figure and it might be half the price it's cost mm. hk to to, to do or that. do we just wait for the Tacken one to come out? Or <laughs> right. <laughs> when they bring out the Dan Buster version. Just, just, <laughs> just stick the boot in, go on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm holding out for those. Hey, It'll be cheaper because they've got no cost at all. Hey, have a quick look on Facebook, see what's going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. It's. Uh... <laughs> I think it'll be the same just with an umbrella on top of it. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's nice to see the kit back, but it always amazes me, and I know we say this off air a lot of the time, is that how much we talk about stuff that actually has got a tiny, enough, tiny percentage in the modelling industry. Yeah. I think it's a bit like this thing about everyone talks about supercars. You're never going to own one. You're very likely not going to drive one, but everyone likes to talk about them. You know, and it is, it's like the bread and butter stuff, let's face it, you have your Airfix, your Ravel, your Hasegawa, stuff like that in normal scales and that, you know, And but then the glory goes to the giant stuff that people aren't going to buy or build, <laughs> you yeah. know, and it, uh, yeah. you know, the smaller stuff gets overlooked and, you know, to be honest, I was talking to uh, one of our members yesterday and we were talking about me going back and doing the bite size of like basic modelling and stuff like that again and uh, I said, but the thing is, you need the fundamentals, you know, you need the groundwork to be done so we're like talking about that kit you know as i say for people who are starting out probably aren't going to spend 600 quid on a 30 second scale lancaster as their first kit you know and that's the whole point you need to keep that base down in there and again does you know as you say i think they've done very well border models obviously have taken it it's great publicity it's a great talking point it's put them on the map because if people have never heard of border models, you know, let's face it, we all spoke about them doing a 35th scale 109. Uh, yeah. And then obviously they've got that coming along. That's a talking point. Now they seem to have jumped off of the 35th scale and gone back to 32nd again because of that. Uh, and again, it's all speaking about it. So all of a sudden border models are spoken about like Tamiya uh, or Hasegawa or Airfix or Ravel as a mainstream, you know, uh, company. So in some ways it's good publicity, as we often say, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And as long as it doesn't kill the company, you know, uh, they yeah. over you know, stretch themselves. But by saying limited, they may have said, look, obviously they've got a bank account somewhere or somebody's got a bank account with money in it and said, look, we're going to fund it to this amount. That's what the limited edition is going to be. So it's no risk. So again, you know, kudos to them. Let's just hope that it uh, it works out. And to, and to be fair to them, the kits that they've bought out so far, the Panzer fours, etc., have been... Yeah, they're nice. Really nice I mean, kits. the 109 were lovely. Yeah, the 109 is a lovely kit. 
Yeah. And about doing the Stu Crot in 30, 50, yeah. still going ahead, yeah. that'd be nice as well. Mm. Um, yeah, as as for for board of what they're producing, I think they're a good company, to be honest. Yeah. The stuff they've done, like I say, the Panzer Force, the Crusader, yeah. mm-hmm. um, the 109, good solid kits, good nicely moulded, mm. look like they'll go together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, as I say, kudos to them, good on them. It's nice to see the kit. It would have been a real disappointing if that kit had gone to be recycled, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, and all, and we never did see it. So we are going to see it. I think it will be quite a limited run, as we said before. And I think, obviously, you, you know, it's not going to be one of those you're going to be walking around shows seeing them queued up. Uh, but it will be nice to see them when they do start to filter through where people have done a nice job on it and a nice weathering thing. But again, I think, let's face it, for most of us, it's probably beyond our price range of buying kits and obviously where you're going to put it as well you know it's all right for us who've got either warehouse or a studio to hang it in but for people who've got it at home what you can do come christmas (laughs) it's that thing again shift it somewhere because we need the dining room table back (laughs) yeah hang it up and put some christmas lights on it yeah that's it (laughs) so the next question then is is who's going to be start who's going to release a uh 30 second stop with camel or stop with pup or uh albatross as their next release yeah (laughs) <laughs> oh, again, this because is it. I mean, I think the thought was always that the moles would never be released, who <laughs> would never be sold. Yeah, is that set a president? Well, it's fair, the main DR1 really set a president, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's that's obviously been sold. So, hmm. does that mean others will then get sold to third party companies for them to again? That, I'm up. you know, we're into this World War One versus the Lancaster scenario yeah. of the saleability of said kit certain ones in the range yeah will sell the camel the se5 the yeah. albatross yeah. But again if you've if you've not got the production costs all you're doing is buying the mold yeah for yeah seventy thousands of pounds yeah and it's but you know how many companies going to take on a health stat or whatever well, it was yeah. and some of the other weird yeah, and wacky get, yeah you know cats to pigeon stuff that they release they're going to get cherry <laughs> yeah no you know, and but again, yeah. you've, also, you've yeah. still got that thing as well. As a company, like we said yeah. before, it's a bit like us suddenly winning the lottery and saying, look, we'll buy up all of their stuff. But everyone knows it's not ours, it's Wingnut Wings. Yeah. So all you're doing is reboxing a kit like Eddard would do or something else like that. So, they'll do it and make a good business. Well, this is it. And let's be honest, hold on a minute, because we were talking about this. So do Eddard. Um, accurate miniatures kits. Again, mm. recycled because of the thing here in the Moles Academy that we gathered over the Moles. Yeah, yeah. And they get recycled through Ravel, with Tuleri, mm-hmm. Academy themselves. And we all know the old accurate miniatures kits, but they still sell because they're yeah. good kits. Yeah. So what would be the difference? Just because why, why would wing, wings be... I, I don't know. It's like they're on this pedestal. And that's the problem. And I think the, people the, have put the, them on the pedestal of being that have, it. That have gone bust on. But mm. why? Why are yeah. they? I I mean, don't get me wrong, when they came out, obviously when we seen it, the tooling, the presentation mm-hmm. was top class. Yeah. Can't knock that, can you? No. But then if, if the internet was around in 1990, you would mm-hmm. be saying that about accurate miniatures. Oh my yeah. God, these are just absolutely yeah. light years ahead of anything that we've seen before. Mm. And that's including probably Azagawa at the time, Tamiya. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I can't think back to that far back. But maybe, do you know what I mean? Maybe it would have saved the company. Yeah, they they were two before their own time. Ooh, we've said that before, isn't Definitely. it? They were definitely before their time, yeah. But I think this is an internet thing again where they put said company on this pedestal mm. and, you know, it's like, well, who is going to rebox it if the moulds come out? But why? It always makes me laugh, though. As I say, it's one of those things, saying about putting them on a pedestal. Obviously, they had the tie-in with Peter Jackson, you know, uh, and because of obviously me being a film producer and obviously yeah. Lord of the Rings and all the other bits yeah, and pieces yeah, yeah, yeah. to it and his passion for World War One, yeah, people have to remember that he soon pulled the plug on it, you know. So yeah, yeah, passion only goes so far, isn't it? At the end of the day, you know, give it with one hand, take away definitely with the other. And uh, you know, for all those people, and I must admit, you know, I was privy to a little bit of information on this, and people saying about always oh, locked it away in a container and all the rest of it, and they'll never see the light of day, did make me chuckle, because that's not how it happened at all. Uh, and it was, you know, one of those things where I think that's the again putting people on a pedestal that he would keep them, and perhaps one day it would be re-released and everything else. But at the end of the day, he's a businessman. 
you know, uh, and you know, cash is king at the end of the day. And if you've got stuff that's worth quite a bit of money, you know, it's like having a classic car, isn't it? And just saying, well, I'm going to put it in a container, you know, in an environmental control warehouse and just save it forever. If you've got the cash to do that, that's great. But if you need the money, you might as well sell it because if you're not going to use it, what's the point of having it? You know, it's just going to sit in a container. But yeah, but that's again, that's from the uh, collector to, hmm. well, I, I suppose, an enthusiast. I've, I've not known the people, but I, you know, obviously, the place, some of the places I've worked or one of the places hmm. I've worked, there is them people who will hmm. have this done and then it will go into a climate yeah. controlled thing and never see the tarmac ever again. And it's just like, yeah, but, why, but why the, would you do it? But the rumours are that he's got enough aircraft in containers that. But if he's got the money to sit there, yeah. Money, isn't so, he? yeah. So, what he, yeah, why wouldn't he do it with all. <coughs> what he does with his own yeah. money is he's, it's up to him, isn't it? You know, it's like, yeah. we, can't, we can't say no. We've got stashes of kits that. Yeah, they never see a light of day. They never see a light of day. Yeah. Isn't it? All modelers are not. Yeah. It's the same scenario, only on a, you know, on a different scale, monetary wise, I yeah. suppose, because. We ain't got that cash to be spending on classic cars or or building mm -hmm. their own aircraft or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's the same thing, isn't it? It is. It is. So, anyway. But anyway, I think good luck to border models. Let's see how you get on with it. Be really yeah. interested to see a prize. Obviously, yeah. it will be a pre-order, so we will be putting them up. We definitely won't be stocking it. I know some people have said we will be stocking it. I've seen that in the forum already, and obviously, it because of the cost of it. You know, like we said before, high value kits, we will not have a pile of them in the warehouse. It will be one of those things where you put your name down for it and uh, we'll do it. Um, as, soon but... as, as soon as we, I mean, two things we really need is the box art, which we've got, mm -hmm. and a price. So as soon yeah. as we find out a price and also that we're, we're going to be able to get. And the yeah. I was going to say to make sure we can physically get them as well, yeah. because if it is a limited, for, yeah, we're speculating that the limited is going to be maybe a couple of thousand, but it may be a couple of hundred for all we know. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's no yes. yeah, taking 10, 20 on pre order and then not being able to get them, and it just causes yes, hassle. Well, but we, we will get onto our said people. Hey, is it? It's not no. very professional, is it? No, no, Don't of course not. You know, well, I'm not being funny. We've, and I love to bash other sites, clearly, but there is certain other places on the internet which have got these up for sale at the moment who have a nasty habit of withdrawing them. They put them up, get all these pre-orders and stuff, and people pay money, and then everyone gets a refund. And it's like, seen that many times, because we've had people criticise us for not doing it and various things and then that happens so again we can only sell what we physically got and we know that's the difference you know we're not just going to put these things up because i did see one site yesterday it said it started off at 350 and suddenly <laughs> jumped to sort of 600 about an hour and a half later and it was obviously they'd seen it for oh about 350 hong kong models will stick that up start with and then yeah. it changed it jumped and it was like right okay you know so yeah we never take money on pre-orders until we're no, exactly. physically uh Yes. No, that's absolutely. That's where we're going to do it. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. the big thing it'll be, it'll be all the internet modellers getting hold of one just to be the first one to build it. So that'll be the wacky races time, isn't it? Yeah. Who be, who be the first internet modeller to quickly do a two minute video build on it and get it out in a weekend? You know, just to, to get the kudos thing for that. <laughs> Go for it, Andy. Did you know, a few places and got the. Um... Valiant. Epics, Valiant, yeah, in stock now, so we should be able to get an hours in. That should be out of the very, very yeah, soon. soon yeah, I did, I did, I did There's a few things to be honest with you. I just want to get September out of the way and get into October when we can actually get some new stuff back in because it's been proper quiet. Yes, so, yeah, you know, kits wise. I think the Broncos do out as well, into the ICM Bronco, yeah, yeah, which again, that'll be that's going to be nice to see. Because I do like the Bronco, it's a funny looking thing, mm. but interesting. Mm. So, go on, carry on. Cool, right, should we do a couple of questions? Yeah, right. Um, first of all, uh, small apology, uh, as Graham has pointed out, you don't get both lyrics in the AV8B Harrier. Uh, this particular version of it, anyway. I know one of the versions you do, yeah. uh, but this one apparently you just get the 100% lyrics, it looks like, not the 65% uh, in there. So, apologies for that last week. Uh, yes, clearly, we've spoke about that, so we've done that one. Uh, Mark says, hi Phil, Matt and Andy, uh, can I ask if you're going to be restocking the new tooled AZ yes. models, same yes. as Rose, yes. pointy in. thing? Yes, on order. Little rocket ship. It is, isn't it? It's very Jerry Anderson, isn't it? 
Mm. Yes. Do you know what? Actually, on Amazon, there you go, call out for Amazon on this one. If you go to Amazon Prime members, there's a hundred years of the REF video that's up. It's about an hour and a half long. It's um can't remember who does. Anyway, very interesting. Very because it's literally it's the lot. Prime <laughs> but what's the video? Yeah, I think it means a download thing. Not, not like a VA, not like VHS. a Betamax. Betamax. Wait, they still call it video on there? On the thing? <laughs> so, so it's just a download? It, well, yes. You, well, it's not even that. It's a stream if you want to be totally <laughs> stream, on it. Right. It's, it's a stream. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's quite interesting because it's yeah. got all things like that in there and javelins and things. So, yes. All right, okay. Yeah. Uh, Carlos says, hi guys, excited to hear about Florifest this weekend, but a quick question, is shipping insanely expensive from the US? Kind of boom, bummed uh, that I can't take advantage of the sales and promos that you guys will be happy perhaps to have. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not it's, good. It's, it's worse, I think. And yes. also, I was reading the other day that shipping in the US is going up as well. Hmm. Um, UPS, uh, uh, USPS, uh, whatever they're called, are putting UPS. their ship. United States Post Service, USPS, isn't it? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are putting their uh, prices up. Um, so no doubt, then our prices will go up to reflect the onward yes. journey. Yeah, because obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. Because obviously, we send to the states, and then it gets passed to the postal service. Yeah, and it's all part of the same charge. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, wow. Yeah, po only, yeah, postal again is just. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Again, like we often, it's one of those biggest questions we get asked, and it is. It's it's one of those things. Unfortunately, it is what it is. You know, um, we, we have no control over it, and we cannot afford to run at a loss. It's as simple as that. We're not going to send it anywhere, and we lose money on it because yeah. clearly we won't be here next week if that's the can. Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely not. The only thing I will say is obviously uh, Brett High Altitude Hobbies. He's going to be having a sale on with us. Is that? So if you are in the US and want um, some Flory models, bits and pieces, Brett's going to be matching what I'll be doing as well. All right. Okay, cool. So, uh, yes, so that'd be cool. Right. Uh, not a lot has happened clearly since last week. It's all a bit stale, as we were saying. So, um, you know, this is this week's releases, which is not that much. Although we've got a very nice Leyland. That's it. It's a Leyland. Retriever General. I couldn't remember last week. Yes. The Leyland truck look with the windscreen. So yep. you get windscreens now. You get an upgrade. Yeah, which hopefully will uh, mean that the Rommel ones will get released. Rommel one? Not Rommel. <laughs> it's just, uh, the Rommel one. That'd be good. Montgomery will yeah. get released. <laughs> yes. Similar bloke, just on the different side. <laughs> 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 so yes there's that one in there and obviously specials we haven't changed over yet have we? because that's going to happen yeah yeah because we're not doing specials this week because it's flory funny. fest flory fest so yes so there will be massive discounts deals are we doing time deals like amazon you know six hour special on God. hey don't talk to me talk to him well, i thought <laughs> you'd have all this sorted by now <laughs> you know <laughs> In a in her own little yeah, way. Fashion. In his own head. It's only Wednesday. <laughs> is it in his jotter? <laughs> it's not Saturday morning yet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, give him give him time at uh, half past seven Saturday morning. He'll get all this sorted. So, uh, but no, we will be doing uh, various specials, various deals, yeah. um, you know, various things like that. No doubt we might do the timed ones as well. Um, I know I'm planning on doing a few like that as well. So, yeah, should be good. Yeah, it will be good. It will so look we'll to it. Yeah, you see, it'd be good. So again, it's that usual thing. It's very, very relaxed and all the rest of it. We'll be doing a few demos. We'll be doing, obviously, talking to you guys. Ooh. We can be, you know, sorting all various things out. Sunday, we've got a thing with Airfix coming on uh, as well, oh, talking yeah. about some of their stuff. Hey, sorry, yes. I'm talking of PM. Yes. I can get it out of me to stand now. Where's him in? Second, I... part, second part of me dudes up. Yes, That's I didn't see that till this morning. Part. Because you've got loads of footage. Yeah, I've got enough, definitely enough for so, third part, and I probably will the fourth part when I take what I'm. So, but can you get a bit closer to the camera? Can you zoom us in? I can't zoom you in. You know, look at that. You're, you're fixed. You <laughs> no, they can see from there. But yeah, so hmm. this this guy that I started months ago, I'm back on it, and as you can see, it's, it is coming along, and Andy's got the footage now. So, so yeah, part two, we'll, part two is up. Yeah, well, part two, I'll link below here today. So that'll be below. You can watch part two of him. Yeah. He's on there. Hopefully part three will be better than part two. We've sorted the camera out. 
and, what? And, and not getting my head in. I was going to say, it's, it's like, it's, I thought it was a barber's uh, show when I was watching it. Do you like it, see? <laughs> but yeah, I thought he cutting hair for a minute. I'm on the wrong video. It has been a bit of a um, well, challenge. A challenge for him, shall we say, with my head <laughs> and Optivisor being in the shop. So I do apologise, but I think we've actually cracked it now for for doing it without. And actually, this thing here you gave me, yes, which I thought was what why is, is uh, that? See, that take I, it all back. I do take it all back seriously because it's been an absolute godsend for just to be honest with you for filming because obviously you can wedge it in yeah like so and set it mm -hmm. the problem I have when I paint figures is I move them around is obviously I'm spinning them round which isn't yeah. good for cameras mm -hmm. or generally just recording but now it's obviously set there I'm is you know it's in one place so the camera's on it and then I yeah so yeah. It works a hell of a lot better. Hmm. So, so not that we sell them, but that's the display swivel stand thing. I can't remember what its technical name was. I don't know. The boxes. I did do a review on it, but I don't know what it's called. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's got a nice quick release, isn't it? So you can manoeuvre yeah. it and yeah. tie and it in quick. And, and it's it's very sturdy as well. It's, you know, once it's down, it's solid. It's, it don't move. Yeah. Put the little pads on the feet, you know, underneath and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is. I don't know, as in for other genres of modelling, I suppose, what you could do with it. Mm. For clamping, I don't know. I think it's originally it, it is designed for figure painting and sort of Gundam and Gunpla yeah. type stuff. Yeah. So I can understand it from that. From what I've seen of all the material, it's always that being used. Yeah, for it, so. yeah. yeah, it is. And it works perfect, to be honest. Mm. See, it's... Um, it's made a hell of a difference to actually me filming. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. Well, glad That's you good. like it. <coughs> no, it is. It's good. It's a good big kit. Mm. Very nice. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll link that down below uh, today's show so you can see that down there, which is part two of the figure painting. And he does look very nice, I must admit. I saw it this morning. <laughs> That's how I know it went live. So it oh. appeared on the feed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, but I'll link that down to know and everything on. Uh, just the other thing as well is that obviously for members as well, obviously went up yesterday, it's like hour and 15 minutes, uh, which gets you pretty much to this, which is quite handy. Uh, so it's the new tutorials range and that's what I'm working on at the moment. I was doing it just before we got this show started is breaking it all up into the bite size one. So hopefully plan of action is get that done for Friday as well. So that'll be live to go on Friday. So this one gets broken down into 10 minute segments for the bite size series or members. You can watch it as a whole one hour 15, which is the entire basic weathering basic everything of construction uh, sanding and filling and everything else of that is in part two so that's coming along as well super good job fantastic right well okay we'll call it right there then if we're all done yep yeah as, as i say we've got loads to do before floor repairs but if you want to join us i think we're starting around about 9 30 or it? nine o'clock which one do you want 10 10 10 <laughs> would be good for me Okay, starting at 10 <laughs> after breakfast. Yeah. Uh, and, I, uh, I, well, I have to be here because I've lost my shed, haven't I? Oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. Shed's gone. Do, do. Matt's going to be homeless in literally two weeks. A week, less than a week. Less than a week. <laughs> Just over a week, I don't know, we're trying to work out. Just over He's going to have a camp bed in there in the, stu yeah. in the studio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, literally. Just literally just literally homeless, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, literally. Yeah. Yes. So that'll be fun. Mm. So good job. Anyway, so, uh, so just Flora Fest is going to be Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Saturday evenings more fun and giggles. Uh, quiz night. Quiz night with drinks and giggles. Canapes. 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 Or d'oeuvres. That's a good packet. Of, I think packet of water is about a <laughs> bag of peanuts. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, cheesy then, shapes. Yeah, and then we're doing <coughs> Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. So yeah, Sunday afternoon we've got Airfix on. We're going to be talking about something. Yeah. Can't say what yet. Secret. Yeah. So um, secret it's not a thirty-second wing. Um, <laughs> it's not <laughs> Lancaster. No, it's hey, a thirty-second Vulcan. It's a one twenty-fourth stop with Camel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so anyway, uh, but anyway, they're going to be on Pranjit's on with that one as well. He's going to be giving us a little bit of a talk, and also you do a Q and A with Airfix as well. So if anybody's got any questions, you'll be able to ask them after I've filtered them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway that's it from us thank you very much for joining us if you want to see us again you can watch us tomorrow night well matt won't because matt's busy busy packing uh but uh, the rest of us will be daughter's on daughter's birthday oh daughter's birthday 
Bless oh, wow. it. Gonna, I can't believe you're going to make her homeless. Well, your own daughter. She's old enough to deal with it now. <laughs> So yes, um, so anyway, so Matt's not on tomorrow night, but the rest of us will be as well. So if you want to join us for that, we'll be on at 7.30. And then obviously I'll be doing a quick catch up with you on Friday with the next part of the Vulcan, which is the penultimate part of the Vulcan build. We'll be up with you. There'll be another part. We'll go up on Monday of that one as well as we finish our way through. So anyway, keep an eye out for everything. Keep an eye on social media. All the stuff is up for the Floria Fest and the deals and the various things coming your way as well. So there we go. Cool. Very good. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you all again very soon. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling. Bye. Bye. Bye.